morning, everybody. I'd like to thank everybody for coming tonight. It's Monday, May 16th, our Gaskin Board of Education meeting. We're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance first. Thank you, Mrs. Gaskins. This evening, Lewis Coy Ragsdale will present the Pledge of Allegiance. And Coy is a second grade student in Mrs. Nutter's classroom. Coy was selected for this honor as a student who comes from a military family. Both mom and dad have served in the United States Army with a total combined service of over 40 years. And we thank them for their service. And certainly welcome to Coy tonight. And I will tell you that our board president, Mrs. Gaskins, will also help uh, lead Coy in the Pledge of Allegiance tonight. It's an honor to have you here. Thank you again to his parents for all of your service. Next, Mr. Costello, if you please would call the roll. Mr. Berganski? Here. Mrs. Gaskin? Here. Dr. Kraut? Here. Mr. Manning? Here. Mrs. Kraut? Here. Welcome to the May 16, 2022 regular meeting of the Kenston Local Schools Board of Education. Prior to this meeting, each board member received for their review and consideration the agenda and materials associated with each agenda item via the electronic Board of Education Agenda System board docs. Board members have the opportunity to call the superintendent and treasurer for information concerning agenda items and to request additional information if needed. As a result, voting at the meeting may appear rushed and without adequate information. This is because the board has thoroughly reviewed the agenda items, done the research, and arrives at the meeting ready to vote. The agenda is available for public view via the district website three days prior to each board meeting. This meeting is a meeting with the Board of Education of Public for the purpose of conducting the school district's business. There are two opportunities for public participation during the meeting as indicated in agenda items designated as public participation. The first is hearing of the public on agenda items where the board will listen to comments from the public on any item on tonight's agenda. This is at the beginning of the meeting so that the board can hear from the public prior to any voting. The second opportunity is hearing from the public on non-agenda items. During this portion of the meeting, the board will hear from the public on any topic relevant to the business of the board. All public comment follows the guidelines included in our board policy. Next on our agenda is accommodations, and I'll turn it over to Mrs. Santella. Great, thank you. I'm pleased for the commendations we have this evening. Um, I would very much like the board to um, recognize our 20, 21, 22 retirees this evening. So I'm going to uh, say a little bit about our retirees and ask them to come up. And um, actually the stairs, I believe, are on this side. And so if they come across the stage and then uh, come up by the podium, and then that way the, the board can recognize them. So if you'll indulge me for a moment. The first retiree that we would like to recognize, and some of our retirees are not here this evening, but I'd still like to say a few words about them. Um, since they've worked so hard and for so many years here at Kenston. So we have Dolores D. Kubek, and D. has worked for, at Kenston for 23 years, since October of 1998. She was first employed in the private food industry as an administrative assistant working for Oscar Mayer and later for Nestle. 
Dee has worked in the special education office since she began with the district, assisting the special education director and staff. In her retirement, Dee plans to spend time with her husband, Don, and her family, including many nieces and nephews. She will also be spending days walking and tending to her yard. We thank Dee for her dedication, and we certainly hope that she enjoys her retirement. And Dee could not join us here this evening. Linda Hertz. Linda has been a bus driver with the Kenston Transportation Department for 19 years. She also works as a proctor in the buildings, and Linda coordinated in the department's Sunshine Group, always seeing the cards were sent to fellow co-workers in both joyful and hard times. Her families will also miss her. Upon her retirement, Linda will be celebrating her daughter's wedding, which is upcoming very soon, and she will also be relaxing with her husband, but would like to return to be a substitute driver, of which we will certainly welcome her. And we thank <laughs> Linda for her dedicated service to our students and wish her all the best. And I think Mr. Costello is uh, going through <laughs> <laughs> Our certificates here. You notice I gave Mr. Costello the hard task tonight. <laughs> That's right. And Karen LaRosa could not join us this evening. Thank you, Linda. Enjoy that wedding. But Karen LaRosa began working at Kenston Schools 32 years ago. Her first position was in food service for three years. Karen then took a position as an administrative assistant, working first in the Gardner office and then moving to KIS. She has been the administrative assistant to the principal for eight different principals over the years. Karen looks forward to spending time with her husband, Frank, with their two daughters and three grandchildren. We thank Karen for her hard work over the years, and we do hope that she has a wonderful retirement. So our best to Karen LaRosa. We'd like to invite Dan Hagen to come up. And Dan was a Kenston graduate, and he has been a custodian here for over 20 years. He is very dedicated and has had near perfect attendance here over those years. Dan has children and grandchildren in Colorado, and he will be spending his retirement taking care of his wife and visiting his family. We thank Dan for his service to Kenson, and we wish him well. And Dan, we're gonna miss seeing you at Kenston Middle School. I'd also like to recognize Kristen Horn Peace. Kristen began her Kenston career in 2006 as the designated for assignment teacher at Kenston Intermediate School. Two years later, she began teaching second grade gifted at Timmins. In 2011, Kristen moved to the middle school to teach gifted. Kristen has also coached both the middle school volleyball and cross country teams. In her retirement, Kristen plans on traveling to see her children and grandson and taking Italian 101 at CSU in the fall. We thank Kristen for the passion she has for her students and congratulate her on her retirement. Andiamo. Pronto. <laughs> Maybe we'll share some <laughs> Next 
Next, I would ask Connie Kramer to please come forward. Connie has been teaching for 35 years, including 31 years at Kenston High School. She has taught a variety of math courses, most recently teaching pre-calculus to juniors and seniors. Connie is proud of a recent initiative, the KHS Giving Garden, Garden, an opportunity for students to share similar interests while giving back to those in need. Connie plans to visit Glacier National Park, the Redwoods in Northern California, and Crater Lake in Oregon. We thank Connie for her years in the teaching profession and her many contributions to Kenston. I will certainly miss Connie. Um, she's been a great teacher to have here. And um, I've just enjoyed my time working with you at the high school and certainly you will be missed. I had the opportunity um, to celebrate with Connie at a recent retirement celebration at the high school. And it was such a wonderful tribute to see the many accolades that your students gave to you. Very, very touching. So enjoy your retirement. And, I know you've touched the lives of many students, as all of our retirees have. Thank you. The next person on our list is Alfredo uh, Torvillas, and he has been a custodian with um, Kenston since 2005. He is planning to move back to the Philippines to be with his family. He loves to fish and enjoys the many different foods from his culture. We thank Alfredo, or Al, for his dedicated service, and we wish him all the best. Al will certainly be missed here at the high school. And next, I would like to invite James Watson up to the <coughs> stage. And James Watson was a Kenston graduate and was head custodian at the high school for the past 20 years. He has known for his attention to detail efficiency <laughs> in what he does and wanting to make conditions better for students and staff. Upon retirement, James plans on expanding his landscaping company. He looks forward to spending time with his many grandchildren and traveling with his wife, Anne. We thank James for his hard work over the years at Kenson and wish him well in his retirement. If you know James Watson, you know that he is just beloved by all the students here at Kenston. It's going to be so hard to replace. Um, every student here just loves James Watson. And uh, I don't know what the high school's gonna do without him, but we certainly wish him all the best. not over. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> A lot of years, James. I have to compose myself. This is a lot tougher than uh, what it should be. Kathy Warner. Kathy has been part of the Kenston High School staff as an educational aide for the past 15 years. Kathy's passion for working with students has also been demonstrated in her position as an advisor to our nationally recognized Bomberettes dance team, something she has done for 30 years. And if you saw the tribute to her this past football season, you certainly understand. Kathy is looking forward to relocating to Columbus to be closer to family, and she wants to travel to see friends in Nashville and Arizona in the near future. We thank <coughs> Kathy for her commitment and know she will enjoy her free time with her husband and family, and we certainly wish her all the best. did you make, Kathy, over the years? Can you count? <laughs> My comment to that is Kathy has uh, hand-knitted an afghan for every bomberette that went through her program and made photo albums and 
um, baked cookies and everything for every member of her dance team throughout her career here. I don't know how she finds the time to do it, but she does. <clears throat> Um, a person that couldn't join us tonight, but we do want to recognize is Kathy Nemec, who is an administrative assistant in maintenance for over 20 years. She has two children, Kelly and Brody, that live in Kansas, and Kathy has a strong love for dogs and horses. She takes in many rescue dogs, and she will be spending her retirement taking care of her husband and visiting her children, and we certainly wish her well in her retirement. And also Shirley Henderson. Shirley has been driving a van for Kenston Transportation for 17 years. Her families and coworkers alike will miss her friendly smile and personality. Shirley has a great report with her students as well as her peers, and her sense of humor and stories will be missed. She plans on spending time with her family when she retires, and we extend our best wishes and warmest congratulations to her on her retirement. Also, Roger Rohde, and I'm not sure, is Roger here tonight? I didn't see him earlier. Uh, Roger has been with, the Kens with Kenston for 18 years in the transportation department as a bus driver. He has participated in many school bus safety rodeos while competing as the regional level, at, at the regional level. Roger consistently placed in the top 10, which qualified him for the state level competition. He did well in that competition as well. His families and coworkers will miss him and we wish him well in all of his endeavors. And Kenston would also um, like to recognize Mrs. Beth Ward, who's here with us this evening, as well as Mr. Bill Timmons. And we recognize them for their years of service on the Kenston Board of Education. Mrs. Ward served on the board for eight years. She was a member of the Kenston Finance Committee. Beth is an Auburn resident and taught math in the Kenston schools as well. She is currently a high school math teacher at Notre, at Notre Dame Cathedral Latin and Beth had three children graduate from the Kenston schools. We'd also like to recognize Mr. Timmons, who held a position on the board for 29 years. He was a member of the policy committee. Bill is a dairy farmer and lifelong resident of Auburn. All three of his children graduated from Kenston schools, and he has had grandchildren who currently attend Kenston. We are grateful for their active leadership and advocacy for Kenston students, staff, and community. Both Beth and Bill have contributed a great deal to Kenston Schools over the years, and we appreciate their commitment and involvement. And so we'd like to recognize both of them, but certainly Mrs. Ward is here this evening, and so we'd like to congratulate her and thank her for all of her service. Thank you for all your time on the board and all that you've done for all of our staff and students. I can tell you it has been an honor and a privilege to work with such fine staff members across the district, our teachers and our support team. Um, we couldn't do it without you, and we know how much you care for the students in this community every day. This community should be proud of um, the work that you've done for our students, and uh, we know that you will sincerely be missed by all, and certainly um, by me. Thank you for all of your service to the Kenston Schools. Best wishes and your continued success in, in everything that you do, and hope that you enjoy your re retirement years. You certainly deserve it, so thank you. <laughs> and at this time, if I can continue with commendations of Mrs. Gaskins, we'd like to uh, recognize Erin McFadden, who's our high school student. If Mr. Gabram could please uh, come forward. Mr. Santilli. So 
So I am honored to recognize one of our students in the art department, an outstanding student. I can kind of get a look of this artwork. And this piece is called A Whole Lot of Tomato. It looks delicious. It makes me hungry right now for dinner. But um, it's outstanding work. So I want to share um, some of this description. And um, I want to thank Mrs. Quinn, her art teacher, who I was able to meet with her today. And we, we talked about the work and the detail um, that Aaron has put into this piece. So a whole lot of tomato was created as a prism colored pencil drawing of a cheeseburger, a pickle, and a tomato. The differences in texture, color, transparency, open to see, and, and attention to detail within the different shades of color in the forms have made it an exemplary piece of art. Just to give you an idea of how difficult it is to get into the top 25 of the Governor's um, Art Show, I will share with some of, some of the statistics. There were 6,280 regional entries to start, entered by 2,441 students from 15 regions. 1,030 of them were selected to enter the state judging. State jurors then selected 342 pieces for the actual exhibit, with 25 of the 342 chosen to receive the Governor's Award of Excellence. Scholarships are offered to seniors by more than 25 universities and colleges of art based on entry into the Ohio Governor's Youth Art Exhibit. It is especially important to note that Erin is only a sophomore, and she has three more years um, of working on the art and winning competitions. <coughs> so she's just getting started. So Erin, if you will come up to the stage, there you are. members of the board. This evening I would like to recognize two students from Timmins <coughs> for their accomplishment in the Young Entrepreneur Pitch Challenge. The Young Entrepreneur Institute was founded in 2005 and entrepreneurship education can make subjects such as math and writing more relevant to students. Students learn about the important factors to be successful, perseverance, hard work, managing adversity and overcoming failure, as well as problem solving. The Young Entrepreneur Pitch Challenge is a simple set of activities that incorporates creativity, critical thinking, and presentation skills. The Pitch Challenge teaches students critical workforce readiness skills and helps develop the mindset for 21st century careers. Mm -hmm. Timmins Elementary had two of its students, Lincoln Van Fossen and Josie Lesnar, who reached the finals for their age group. Josie's submission, Sweaters for Pets, pitched the business concept of keeping our pets warm during the cold months. Lincoln's submission, Savor the Flavor, focused on a specialty flavored envelope to escape the terrible taste of glue. Each pitch video was posted for the public to vote on, and Lincoln's submission won for the K through fourth grade division. At this time, I invite Lincoln and Josie to come up and be commended for their accomplishments. <clears throat>
Agenda is a building update. No, I think I think we have the one open, right? Oh, okay. we have to vote on those. Yes, you have to vote on those. Well, and we, we, have need a, we need a motion or a second. We need a motion. Yeah. So, yeah. so on the, all the accommodations together, do we have a motion for those? Mm -hmm. Beth, is there a second? I'll second. Ben, you want to call the roll, Mr. Mm -hmm. Dr. Kraus? Mrs. Troutman? Yes. Mr. Manning? Yes. Mr. Berganski? Yes. Mrs. Gaskin? Yes. Now we're on to board reports. Yes, Nancy, I'll turn it over to you for the building update. First one, Mr. Lister. <coughs> Is that you, Tom Cooper? Yes, I'm sorry, I'm just finding my spot. Um, yes, at this time, I would like to have a Mr. Tom Gabram come forward. He's going to provide us with a building update for the high school. Can I interrupt for a second? Sure. Anybody from the accommodations, if you'd like to be dismissed, we'll take a, a, just a minute. Thank so you. anybody wants to get up and go, you can go. Thank you. <laughs> I always forget. <laughs> You're free Don't to go. leave. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, our retirees are going out to a nice dinner somewhere. Yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay, Mrs. Gaskins. I don't know if you guys would like to stay up on stage because I, I am going to go through some slides and a little video. Oh, or would you guys like to have a seat maybe in the front row? Yeah, we'll okay. Thank you. Thank you for having me to report out on the high school. Um, when we were asked to report on our buildings, our, our principals, um, I immediately started brainstorming. I'm like, what do I want to report on? Um, and our building is quite comprehensive with so many different programs. So it's like, what do I select to, to, to present on? Everything has value that these students um, experience. So I kind of sat back and I watched the other three principals present first over the last three months and I kind of assessed and judged a little bit and um, I kind of, kind of thought about what, what they presented on and each of them had like a common theme, okay? And so the theme that I recognized right away was um, kind of their purpose of a, of a building, of an elementary, of an intermediate, of a middle school and what their purpose was. And each of them spoke um, about taking that next step. So getting them prepared for that next grade level. When they leave my building, I want them to be prepared with what? So as Mr. Rogeliner spoke about Timmins and the many great programs, um, he talked a little bit about the transition bridge over to the intermediate school and what those third graders are gonna have with them, the foundation of skills that they experienced at Timmins, it's gonna pay off in the intermediate school. The same goes for Mrs. Brockway's presentation, and she spoke a lot about PBIS and positive climate culture and, and what fifth graders need to prepare for that next step as they cross the bridge to the middle school, just across the parking lot. But they need, they may, they need more foundation skills and in independent learning. They're gonna now have eight teachers, they're gonna have eight classes, it's gonna be much different. So what do they need to prepare? And then of course, the middle school, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. And how do they get prepared for this final destination down here? And Mr. Fender has spoken numerous times, what can I do, Tom? What can we do to support this transition 
I want these students to be ready to go. Let's lessen the anxiety. What can we do together to really make this work? And so he, all three principals did a fantastic job um, demonstrating their purpose. So then I said, well, what's our purpose? We're a little bit different. We're the final destination, okay, in our, in our campus here. And I really can't just build a transition bridge out of Kenson High School. It's not one bridge, multiple path pathways, multiple bridges. Um, and, I, and I have these ninth graders from the middle school, and they're ready to learn. And, I, and we need to take them higher. We need to take them and, and show the progress in, in their learning style so they are prepared for whatever pathway they choose when they come out of Kenson High School. And so that is, that is clearly our purpose. And we call that college and career readiness. And so in order to fully prepare students, there are three components, and, and you heard the other principals kind of touch on these three components. But we value these three components in order for our system to work. Okay, climate, it's huge. It's all the PBIS initiatives. It's all those different things that we've, we've started and this is how we sustain a positive culture. We want our students to walk in as ninth graders, and we, our goal is to sustain a safe, respectful, accepting climate. Some of them don't have that safe climate at home. We don't know. We don't know about the fractured families or, or the different events, but we want to establish a learning environment that they can come to and feel comfortable. Number two is achievement. Okay, falls right in line with our, um, with our mission. All right. At the high school, we offer a wide range of aligned coursework and curriculum, allowing students to achieve their academic excellence. It's up, up to us to provide that type of curriculum, the aligned curriculum working with our Ohio Department of Education. And then finally, the opportunities. Everything else that students are doing outside the classroom. You name it, we have it. It's unbelievable how many programs, and I give kudos to our our coaches, our leaders, our advisors who have passion in those interests and they put in so much time to expose these students to kind of work with them and share, and share their interests. So back to climate. Here at the high school, we established bomber beliefs and we established a support structure. Okay, again, this falls under PBIS. So, our student committee came up with the bomber beliefs. This was early last year. Being respectful, be responsible, be kind, and build community. That's it. Four goals, four expectations. If you do that, and you have these desired behaviors, you're going to have positive outcomes. Okay? And that's all we want you to think about. Those four bomber beliefs. Live them. And so, the bomber belief sets up the expectations, and if the behavior is there, the outcome is there. So this is some data from a student survey last year, and these were some responses about the KHS climate and, and what, what students may feel or what students may experience. So I just took some of this data and I put it together. Students feel safe. They feel a sense of belonging. They feel like their voices can be heard. They develop trust and relationships so important for a positive climate with teachers and other staff members. They understand and respect differences in others. That could be gender, that can be race, that can be ethnicity. They also understand that people have biases that might not change. They have biases that they were raised in their household and that's what they believe, okay? And that's okay. But students will show respect towards others, even if they may disagree with an opinion that one might have or with one of those biases. But they're not going to make a big deal out of it. They're not going to argue it. They're just going to recognize it and, and maybe can agree to disagree. That's the goal. Failure. It's OK to fail. And I'm not talking like Fs on report cards. We don't want that. But it's OK to fail on certain lessons, on certain activities. Students need to fail, okay? They, they need to learn from mistakes that they make, and it's better if they're failing here in high school and learning from all of those before they move on. 
participating in multiple opportunities inside and outside of school. Students at KHS connect to community partners who help them with career exploration as well as networking. And they learn life skills that will apply to their future success after graduation. That's a pretty positive climate. And it's not 100% of the students. Not at all, but it's a majority of them. So how do we promote and spread the positive climate and the culture that we're trying to establish? So these are banners, and we work directly with our digital design courses and Mr. Malkus and how, how he leads these students, and they come up with these designs, and they produce it right here in-house. You guys have been in the hub and, and seen that monster print shop, and it's amazing. It's amazing the stuff that they can um, put out. So other bomber beliefs that we have plastered in our classrooms, on our, uh, our glass in our, in our doors of our classrooms as well. And then there's Billy. Billy the Bomber, our mascot. So a huge important, huge part of the, the culture, very important. Um, when people see Billy, they smile. Billy brings happiness, right? We send him down to the elementary schools, he gives high fives, he gives hugs. Um, so Billy's important to our, to our building, no doubt. We have him in different areas of the building, on the stairs right there. And then the achievement. So this is what we offer. 27 AP classes. We have our career tech education through Auburn Career Center, 22 programs. We have an, a track of honors courses going through um, our four by four college prep schedule, semester based. I've talked to many alumni that come back and, and they say, Mr. Gabriel, you know what helped me most prepare? Was the semester schedule. Because I'm used to the time sitting, you know, for a little bit longer than, than 60, 70 minutes. And a lot of the, the colleges are set up on that same schedule. College Credit Plus, our dual credits, our partnerships. We have teachers teaching College Credit Plus right here in our building. So it provides another opportunity for dual credit other than our AP. The innovative and personalized learning opportunities okay, that we've created. The media communications with Mr. Novak. The digital design, Mr. Malkus. The engineering with Mrs. Moon and, and Mr. Barris. And some of these classes, we have to cap them. The student interest is driven by, by that personalized learning, by, by the experience they're having. Um, the career exploration activities at each grade level um, and, and looking for career pathways and looking at certain courses to prepare yourself if you're going to go into business or engineering or the medical field, what courses are you going to take? And then, of course, our world language department. Unbelievable. I was talking to Mr. Fender and he needs he needs one of my teachers to come down and, and pick up, I think it's Spanish. My teachers are maxed out. Those numbers continue to grow because of the experience you know, in Spanish, French, and Russian. And then the many opportunities, the athletics, our competition teams with speech and debate, science Olympiad, mock trial, academic challenge, you hear about them all the time, the successes that they have. Kent Center stage right here in the auditorium, all of the concerts right here, and so on and so forth. And this is what we provide. A couple of the students in the digital design kind of put this together, which is a branding of a lot of these groups and a lot of these clubs. And it kind of stands out, and it's very creative. And it certainly is not everything that we offer, but it's, it's some of them that were most popular with the students that we were working with. Um, so it's, it's a nice flyer that kind of encompasses a lot of our programs that students um, have high interest in. What was most important to me, though, was the student voice. How do I capture the student voice? I can sit up here and talk about all of our programs that we have in place, but how do I capture the student voice? So I met with Mr. Novak in Bomber Media and kind of told him what the goal was. And so he gave me two students, two senior students, Micah Greenberg and Max McNeil. And I met with them and we said, hey, we want to we capture the voice of really what, what are our seniors taking with them? What is preparing them? What is, what is an experience that they can maybe talk about? 
And so we set up these interviews. I think they selected, I kind of let them run this. This is their project working under Mr. Novak. And I think they selected 10 to 12 students. So we only captured three on this because we could sit here for a half hour and you guys would all love to hear what these seniors are talking about. And for your board members, I will give you the, the, um, the cut of the other ones if you want to re uh, review that. But it was amazing um, to hear and to listen to the, the stories and how they've been impacted, not just by teachers, but by um, experiences, whether that's athletics or the speech and debate the connection or relationship that they have with one of our teachers and the growth that they've demonstrated and learned from it. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and show just this clip. And then, like I said before, we do have um, B-roll footage um, that we can share out too. Um, are you, yeah, thank you, Mr. Kenner. Maybe a little bit more. I don't want to be a follower. I don't want to just follow what the boss says. I want to be innovative. I want to push push to the next level, uh, especially in the workforce. So I think being that leader on, on the football team has really taught me a lot here at Kenson. You know, what's one thing that you think has really impacted you for this next step in your life and has prepared you kind of for this next step in life with college and career readiness? Um, being a part of a Kenson football team, uh, break my ankle, unfortunately, in my sophomore year, and. Uh, have to battle back against that um, and, and watch some of my best friends here at Kenson uh, play their last game and I couldn't be out there with them and, and do anything about it. Um, it was heartbreaking, but um, being a leader on that team and trying to keep the morale up and just kind of building those leadership roles. Um, finally, senior year, obviously, we start off real good, beat Chagrin, beat a really good Perry team, and uh, we go to play NDCL and we at least lose two huge players, Nico Georgiou and, and Ryan Miller. Um, and the, the, the team's kind of like, well, what do we do now? And, and they kind of looked at me and I'm like, well, it's, it's no different. Next man up, we trust those guys. Um, we're gonna go play football and we're gonna win. And, and we, won, we won a lot of football games and, and just kind of being that guy and, and leading that team to, to success, to pr pretty good success, um, has really prepared me to be a leader and uh, at my next level. The most important thing is the knowledge all my teachers have given me. Um, they have taught me lessons and values that I still cherish to this day, all the way from freshman year up to now. And um, it's just, they, they really helped me out, especially with hard times I'm going through and things of that nature. They, they look out for me and they really helped me get ready for this next step in my life, going to college and finding out who I really am as a person. I think that a lot of people don't realize until they get to this high school level is that in order to grow, you have to be challenged. You have to fail. I guess what is one thing um, as you reflect on, you know, that, that you think has prepared you most for this next step in life, this college and career readiness? You know, obviously the whole point of high school and schooling in general is to prepare you for this next step. And believe it or not, um, I feel that one of the most important steps or helping me to make that next step is happened this year in calculus. Um, I never met anyone or taken a class that has challenged me as much as this class has. And um, my teacher, Ms. Kramer, would always say after a hard problem that everything is hard until it's not. And I know that sounds so obvious, like of course, it's everything's hard until it's not. That's what I thought the first time. But um, as I kept going, I realized that She's right, everything is hard until it's not. And um, there were a lot of times where I did, I failed in class to understand things and um, really get it. But the more I worked at it, the more I realized everything is hard until it's not. So pretty, pretty impactful session that I sat through. Imagine 10, 10 or 12 students sharing kind of heartful moments, experiences, um, relationships, and how they will benefit from all of this. 
So again, you look at the climate, you look at the um, achievement, we have high achievement, and you look at the many opportunities that these students can all benefit from. And, and that's what it's about. And it, it may, the journey may end next Tuesday at seven o'clock at Parkside, but like the memories, the experiences, the life skills, everything that they have, have kind of taken in since they were ninth graders, they're gonna be able to, to benefit from and apply to um, their future. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gabram. So our next uh, part is for our organizational update. And tonight, we have a presentation from the Kenston Alumni Association. And uh, Mr. Tewksbury could not join us this evening, but we have another member from uh, the Alumni Association. So we'd like uh, Mrs. McGrath to speak to you a little bit about that organization this evening. Well, hello everyone. I am Katie McGrath, and on behalf of the Executive Board of the Alumni Association, that's Drew Tewksbury, our president, and Jennifer Miller, I would like to thank the Board of Education, Mrs. Santilli, for the opportunity to highlight the mission, purpose, and efforts of Kenston's Alumni Association. While Tom said, you know, next Tuesday is the end, well, it's not the end because the Alumni Association is here for all our students. And as he said, it just continues the sense of belonging that our students have here. While Kenston will shortly be celebrating our 67th commencement on Tuesday, the Alumni Association is only five years old. Can you believe that? Only five years old. Because in 2017, with assistance from Kenston's um, graduate, Matt English, and board member, Mrs. Gaskins, the Alumni S Association secured 501c3 status. The Alumni Association is a nonprofit volunteer organization whose purpose is to support Kenston schools, celebrate the spirit, tradition of Auburn, Bainbridge, and Kenston schools, and to coordinate alumni relations by serving as a liaison between alumni and the district. And again, continuing that sense of belonging and making those connections. We recognize and celebrate our graduates in a variety of ways. We started an alumni hall of fame that recognizes not only our um, amazing students and where they've gone, it also recognizes our staff. If you've ever been in the cafeteria for the pancake breakfast, on the wall is the military wall of honor. We recognize all those serving in the military and continue to add to that because we are bombers and we are very proud of the military traditions that we have here. We have a website and a social media presence on Facebook and Twitter. Um, Throwback Thursday is a big fan favorite because every Thursday uh, we get the yearbooks out and we see, um, we share some pictures and some of people sitting in this room have seen themselves because they're Kenston graduates, but also we try and share um, a little throwback to what was going on in, in a snapshot in history. We also have um, an archive of as many yearbooks as we can um, and Donnie Hoffman has promised me that all his yearbooks will someday be mine. I'm very excited about that. Donnie Hoffman was a longtime custodian here in the district. So yes, we keep people close. Um, we continue to archive and accumulate everything from uniforms and artifacts chronicling Kenston's proud history. Mr. Rayback has trusted me with his letter sweater. So I feel very important and someday we will have a great place to, to display that. Families have um, entrusted memorial scholarships to us. We have the Carrie Friedman Scholarship um, for students so that they can experience Kenston Field experience. It was a love of hers um, and something that her family passes on to the next generation. And then, okay, I do have a senior and I won't get world weepy, but we do recognize legacy graduates now every year. If you are a member who has graduated, um, your child is recognized as a legacy graduate. And this year we have almost 25 and those ranks continue to grow. But it says something about our community. 
that our families come back because this is where they want to raise their children. And that is because of the schools and the foundation that is built here by all of you. We also work with class officers to promote upcoming class reunions, coordinate events, and tours on campus. We are looking forward to the post-COVID um, era when we can get back to hosting all class reunions and creating more social um, traditions for our alumni um, and networking opportunities for our graduates. But next week, we look forward to welcoming 232 new members into the Kansas Alumni Association and celebrating with them. As our members grow, we always look for volunteers who love Kenston and want to carry on these traditions. We're excited to connect with generations of proud graduates and further their experiences, friendships, and love with the Bomber Nation because many of the stories that they tell years from now are the stories that all started here and are all we have to do. So thank you. We'll move on to board um, committee updates. So, if any board members at any of their committees have met, if they have any reports, finance. Yep, we met uh, May 3rd, um, and we didn't get through all the agenda items there. We were running short on time, but we did review the May forecast that we are approving tonight. So, we did another final review of that. Uh, we got an update on the tax implement plan financing setting some timelines with the township on talking to them about that. And 2023 budget that Paul has been working on um, through some ideas, um, Adam there, and uh, and went through those uh, also. Dennis, did you have any extra? No, pretty much covered it there. Okay. I don't, I don't have a committee to report on, but I just wanted to acknowledge I opened up my issue of neighbors and uh, saw Kate Hoos by me face and a nice article about, uh, along the lines of what Tom Baker was just talking about. So um, thanks to everybody that coordinated that and got uh, that out to the committee. So thank you. Jen, any legislative reports? Uh, no, they've been um, on a spring break hiatus, so there's really not been much activity. Um, I don't really expect much um, as we going to come into summer. They, they kind of tend to take some time off, but I'll keep you posted if anything earth shattering happens. Great. So I have a birthday book tonight uh, to celebrate Mr. Perkansky. And so the book tonight is called Song for a Whale. And it's by Lynn Kelly. And it's about Iris, who is the only deaf student in her sixth grade class who struggles to communicate well with kids at school and feels a strong connection with Blue 55, which is a lone whale she's heard about who can't communicate with others because its voice is on a different frequency. Using her knowledge of electronics and sound, she records her school's orchestra playing notes in the whale's frequency and sends them to a biologist who plans to tag Blue 55. Receiving an encouraging reply, Iris decides to meet the research team in the whale in Alaska. However, her initial plan falls through as she confides in her recently wid widowed grandmother, who takes Iris on an Alaskan cruise that proves transformation um, for both. The strength of the book is its portrayal of Iris as a deaf girl in a hearing world and as an intelligent 12-year-old in a single-minded pursuit of her goal. So we'd like to share this copy of the book, Mr. Berganski, with you and hope you enjoy it. And then you can pass it on so we can uh, put it in one of our libraries for our students to enjoy. And we extend a uh, happy birthday to you. Move to the hearing of the public on agenda items, and I do not have any. Did you get anything? Um, no, I we'll proceed on to financial items um, in section seven. We have A through H. If I can have a motion on those, Same. Beth, is there a second? I'll second. Tom seconds. Any discussion? 
If, if I may, I just wanted to point out that um, this is the meeting here in May where the board will approve the five-year forecast. As I mentioned before, we spoke at the um, last work session as well, that this five-year forecast will be loaded to the Ohio Department of Education prior to its uh, deadline of uh, May 31st. Um, as you well know, we have a requirement to report at the by no later than the end of November and no later than the end of May. And so the five-year forecast was done a little bit early this year so that we could address it in the Finance Committee. And then we had it ready, certainly, for the board's work session to um, present there and gave you a week or so to uh, look it over. If you have any questions or concerns, I'm certainly prepared to speak to those for you this evening. Any questions or comments? Mr. Castello. Dr. Krause? Yes. Mr. Manning? Yes. Mr. Berganski? Yes. Mrs. Troutman? Yes. Mrs. Gaskin? Yes. Also, I'd like to thank the Parker Hannafin Foundation and Mr. DeMarcus for the <coughs> donations that run that category. Also. Certified personnel, we have A through C. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Second? I can second. Jen? Any questions for discussion on certified personnel A through C? Hearing none, Mr. Costello, do you want to call the roll? Dr. Krause? Yes. Mrs. Troutman? Yes. Mr. Manning? Yes. Mr. Berganski? Yes. Mrs. Gaskin? Yes. And we'll move on to nine, which is classified personnel. We're going to do A through C first. Is there a motion? Yes. Beth, the second. I'll Tom. second. Tom? Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, call the roll. Dr. Krause? Yes. Mr. Manning? Yes. Mr. Berganski? Yes. Mrs. Troutman? Yes. Mrs. Gaskin? Yes. Then we'll go to 9E. I need a motion for 9E. Beth, second. I'll second. Dennis, second. Any discussion? Call the roll, Mr. Costello. Dr. Krause? Yes. Mr. Berganski? Yes. Mrs. Troutman? Yes. Mr. Manning? Abstain. And Mrs. Gaskin? Yes. And supplemental contracts, we have just A and B. Is there a motion? I'll move. Jen, is there a second? Second. Beth, any comments, questions, or discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Castillo, would you want to call the roll? Mrs. Troutman? Yes. Dr. Krause? Yes. Mr. Berganski? Yes. Mr. Manning? Yes. Mrs. Gaskin? Yes. 11, exempt personnel. We just have A. Is there a motion for that? Beth, a second? I'll second. Jen? Any discussion? Questions? <clears throat> I hear the rain. Paul, do you want to call the roll? Uh, Dr. Krause, sorry about that. Yeah. And Mrs. Troutman? Yes. Mr. Manning? Yes. Mr. Berganski? Yes. Mrs. Gaskin? Yes. Uh, next, we go to special education under 14, contracted services. We have just 14A. Can I have a motion for that? Beth, a second. I'll second. Tom, any questions or discussion? Call the roll. Dr. Krause? Yes. Mr. Manning? Yes. Mrs. Troutman? Yes. Mr. Berganski? Yes. Mrs. Gaskin? Yes. Under new business, we have A through J that we will do first. Do I have a motion? Beth, as a second? I'll second. Jen, is there um, any discussion, questions? I would just like to thank whoever in the board office was responsible for making the summaries for the board of the handbook changes and the policy. That was very appreciated. That is a lot of material to go through, and that was very um, make sure we don't miss anything. I appreciate that. So thank you. Anything else? Call the roll. Dr. Krause? Yes. Mrs. Troutman? Yes. Mr. Berganski? Yes. Mr. Manning? Yes. Mrs. Gaskin? Yes. And then we have under 16, L and M are just first readings. Oh, wait, let me stop. Let me go back before we do that. Um, since we did approve. Uh, J, that will fall on our 
our work session. So I believe our calendar is we need to reschedule our work session. So remember, so that, that will not be a day off. We had a, a work set session scheduled for that date. So we need to pick a new date that board members are available in June for our work session. And the regular meeting of the month is June 27th. Questions? Is canceling an option? I mean, do you think we will have just had lots of, I mean, we've got superintendent hiring. I mean, I know that's, that's always an option. Topics, but um, I mean, the Monday before the 13th is fine with me if we want to move it to them. But, you know, if there's no business that early in the month, I'm okay with canceling it. We'll actually get that question. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's the pleasure of the board? 13th or to cancel? Can I just suggest that we at least have something on the calendar? Because if we don't schedule it and we need it, uh, I think it's going to create a bigger headache. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. So we will okay. is, put it on the calendar. Is everyone available yeah. on the 13th? 13th. Just one second. At 6 o'clock. Hold on one second, please. 13th. Uh huh. At 6. June 13th. Works here. I think I'm good. The 27th is my 30th wedding anniversary. Can I convince anybody to change that meeting? I'm just kidding. I know. Oh, so we're going to have, we're having a party <laughs> after the meeting. Awesome. <laughs> just, it never hurts to ask. I'm sure your husband won't mind celebrating with the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring snacks. Awesome. <laughs> it's the 13th at 6. Okay for everyone. Yes. Yes. So yes. We'll put that on the calendar with the caveat that we may cancel it if, if need be. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for indulging. Um, then we'll go on. To, we have L and M under that section. It's just first reading of a board policy and a first reading of curriculum materials. No vote is needed on that. Next, we have hearing on of the public on non-agenda items. I have two uh, speaker cards. Um, the first one is Suzanne Tabor. Is Suzanne still here? Is there a microphone for her to come up to? Uh, she come to the podium. Come up to the podium, yes. You want to come up and state your name and your address, and you will be um, have a time out. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, thank you for allowing me to speak. I'm Suzanne Tabor. I am both a substitute and parent in the district and I live at 9815 Lost Lakes Trail. At three months of age, I held my firstborn as she looked up at me with her first smile. Yes, a milestone. My reaction was tears. The bittersweet feeling of knowing that every milestone met means that she is claiming her independence, growing, learning, and gaining self-confidence. It dawned on me in that moment that I am raising an adult. We want to protect and preserve our children. Why? We are trying to retain their innocence and keep them safe. There are times I wish I could freeze my children right where they are, cherish them in this moment forever. But that is a selfish attempt to protect my feelings, to help me feel that I've done everything I can to make life perfect for them. Think about our children and what we want them to be as adults, as individuals. Do you see confidence, compassion, adaptability, we get to teach these lessons every single day through our words and actions as parents. What are you doing in these moments of not only success, but most importantly, adversity to teach the lessons? Are you demonstrating mutual respect, teaching them to be accountable? Are you urging them to value others even when they do not share the same interests or views as you? Excuse me, as others. We are raising adults. Part of Kenston's mission is for students to maximize personal growth in a community which demonstrates and develops mutual respect, responsibility, and lifelong learning. When a child makes a bad decision, what is the appropriate response? Is it to use the decision as a teachable moment and to impart good values as well as consequences? Are you showing the way with kindness, respect, and grace? I've been very troubled by some of the things that have been suggested at recent board meetings. Invasion of privacy, policing of thought, cell phones in classrooms. As you continue the difficult work of serving on the school board, I encourage you to remember that unless you are a formally edu trained educator, 
You are not qualified to make decisions on curriculum, teacher education, and best educational practices. This means turning to vetted sources, such as child development experts and educational psychologists who recommend evidence-based practices, free from personal values and biases. Decisions regarding classroom practices and management should only be made with these considerations and not following the latest political fear-mongering. Using verifiable, well-sourced, measurable data from experts is the only way that we will maintain best practices in our schools and continue to be a top-ranked district in our area and state. We are raising adults. Kenston's student body is incredibly diverse with students of every stripe in familial, racial, educational, religious, sexual, intellectual, physical, socioeconomic, and emotional categories. You may find that you don't identify with as many of our children as you think. Yet you represent each and Tabor. every one of the students in our district. Up. Together we are raising adults. We are Kenston. Uh, Greg Coltus, 17410 Snyder Road. Um, similar theme, because we had talked about cell phones in the past, and then mine kind of revolves around that too. Uh, so I'll tell some stories. Mom is home all day with the kids. It's been a struggle. At breakfast, the kids push around the healthy choices mom has set out, and an hour later, they complain they're hungry and they want a snack. Lunch is a repeat of breakfast. No one seems hungry for the carrots and the dip or the apple slices, they just want snacks. Well, daddy comes home and the kids quickly find a new target. Daddy, daddy, we've been good all day long. Can we have a cookie? Now, a new dad says, sure, in fact, I'll have one with you, let's go, okay? But a wise dad makes sure that he talks to his wife first to verify this definition of I've been good all day. He knows if he doesn't communicate with mom now, he may be, be communicated to later uh, in another fashion. Well, today's kids have replaced cookies with technology. How many times do you tell your kids to put away their cell phones? At the dinner table? Are you telling me this can't wait 45 minutes? Put that away till dinner's done. How about at the restaurant? Uh, the waitress is here now, are you gonna order? What do you mean you haven't even looked at the menu yet? Oh, you take them in the grocery store and they wander around oblivious behind you? Uh, son, can you move out of this lady's way? She's trying to get to the groceries. Once they start driving, it's always in the back of my mind. I hope they're not texting and driving. Do you really think that when they come to school that the, magically be, this behavior transforms into responsible cell phone use? As a teacher, I tell myself, students to put their cell phones away constantly. Maybe it's test day. I don't want anybody to accuse you of cheating. Put your phone away so nobody has any problems. Maybe it's science experiment day. You know, we got Bunsen burners and chemicals. I want all the cell phones over there, okay? Art class, dude, there's paint everywhere. I don't need anything spilled. Put your cell phone away. Heck, if I'm in math class and using scissors, guys, put the cell phone away. So now, the teacher has told the student to put away their cell phone. The students don't like that. They want their cookies. They go home, they complain. Can you believe this mean teacher won't let me have my phone in class? I'm using it for schoolwork and to videotape the lessons. The teachers are being mean, blah, 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 blah. Don't be the new dad. If you have a question about why your student's phone was taken away, take the time to pick up the phone and communicate with the teacher you may come to find that your child's definition of I was good all day with my cell phone is not exactly the same as the teacher's. We get the same behavior. You'll be surprised. We're dealing with the same behavior issues in the classroom that you are at home. On a personal note, I amazingly graduated from Kenson High School, earned a Bachelor's of Science degree, and a Master's of Education degree without the help of a cell phone. Uh, and if Mr. any of you Coltis, teachers out there have Mr. my Coltis, kids in class thank and you. they have their cell phone out. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak before we move on? I will turn it over for Mr. Costello for your scheduling report. 
I actually do not have a report this month. I turn it over to Mrs. Santillo for superintendent's report. Well, I do have a superintendent's update tonight. Uh, first of all, I'd like to um, say that we do appreciate Representative Dave Joyce, who recently visited Kenston Middle School to recognize the renewal of its designation as an Ohio Department of Education uh, Purple Star School. The award recognizes the school's commitment to serving and supporting students and families connected to the United States Armed Forces um, and Ohio National Guard. KMS is one of 432 active Purple Star schools that dedicate time and support to students and military families. The Purple Star, Star Advisory Board helps determine school eligibility requirements. Am I getting that much feedback here? I'm sorry. Um, a Purple Star school receives the designation for three years, after which time the school can re reapply for renewal of that designation. Kenston Middle School was first bestowed with the honor in 2020, and the renewal carries through 2025. Timmins Elementary School is also recognized as a, as a Purple Star School. So uh, we really appreciate the work of our staff and our students uh, for that designation. And more importantly, it, it provides that connection to the military families that we have here in our district. And so uh, commend them and appreciate uh, that recognition. We also um, had Senator Jerry Serino, who visited Kenston Middle School to recognize and honor Kenston speech and debate state champions in public forum debate. Audrey Earl and Grace Boudris and novice state champion in humorous interpretation, Jacob Spencer. He shared with the students how the valuable skills that he learned in high school in speech and debate and theater benefited him daily. And I have to commend him. He spent a lot of time talking to our students that day and really getting to know them and sharing how those skills translate uh, to life beyond their school career and how they can use them um, later in life. And I just really spent a lot of time connecting with our students and really appreciated the time that he took with them. Kenston High School students in Mr. Christian Barris's AP Physics and Engineering classes adapt toys for children with disabilities. And the, sky, and the high school has a long-standing partnership with Replay for Kids. It's a nonprofit organization that works with volunteers to repair and adapt toys for children in Northeast Ohio. Students learn basic electronics, problem solving, and the importance of adapting devices to meet the needs of students with disabilities. This project has been supported by both the Kenson Foundation and the high school PTO. And I have to tell you, I've had the opportunity to visit the classroom and watch this firsthand. It is amazing the work that the students do to use um, the, just the AP physics and just their skill set to adapt these, these toys for students. Um, so just a wonderful um, organization and that replay for kids. And so I commend Mr. Barris for his work and, and the students work with that program. And then on Saturday, May 7th, the senior class hosted the 2022 prom at the Weston in downtown Cleveland. It was a fabulous event. And I certainly want to thank the senior class officers and their advisor, Mr. Tony Marchese. I've said it a number of times. Um, Mr. Marchese is instrumental in the planning and the organization of this event. We couldn't do it without our chaperones who are there and the high school administration. It was a great event and um, students were, were just wonderful to see them enjoying that uh, prom. And um, I was honored to be there. And as Mr. Gabram knows, I enjoy being able to crown the queen and um, it, was, uh, it was nice. I, I can't count the number of proms that I've been to, but um, this one was certainly memorable for me since I, I did tell my husband it was probably one of my last proms. So um, I appreciated being there and uh, Thank you, Mr. Gabram, for your, your kindness and uh, making sure that I was able to crown the queen. Um, after prom, I have to thank our amazing parents, the businesses, and our community for supporting our after prom celebration and night at the Oscars. The creativity, the generosity, and the hard work of the amazing team, all those individuals who make it a safe and memorable event for our students, it was outstanding, and the students really enjoyed themselves. Um, it's a long night, but it's a fun night, and uh, it was really just a, a great night to see our students and uh, really have so much fun. And I think our parents enjoyed it as well. A lot of hard work goes into it, and um, 
I can't thank again the parents enough for putting that on. It is it's a night that we certainly need. It's one that um, I think schools that don't have that um, miss out on. Uh, so I encourage the Kenston community to always continue that. It's a way of certainly keeping our our children stay safe. So I appreciate the parents for doing that. Um, last Friday, over 50 senior students were recognized for their achievement in the classroom, the arts, the trades, and on the athletic field at Kenston's annual scholarship recognition. Members of the class of 2022 were honored with over 93,000 in local scholarships from area businesses, civic organizations, individuals, and the Kenston Foundation. And we certainly appreciate the generosity of the donors and we applaud the students for their accomplishments. And certainly our gratitude goes out to the Kenston Foundation for all the work that they do to assist with those scholarships and um, help uh, provide those um, scholarships for our students and the work of the foundation. So appreciate that uh, event and that recognition. And then I want to recognize both Erin Tobel and Teresa Petrick. Were, they were nominated for the Chagrin Valley Rotary Teacher of the Year Award. This re award recognizes teachers whose classroom work demonstrates commitment to excellence, um, who have an unusually positive impact on the lives and future of their students, and who challenge students to do their best. Students, parents, and other teachers um, were all eligible to nominate, and the Rotary accepted four secondary candidates this year. There's two from Kenston and two from Chagrin Falls, and after going through the process, the interview team selected Aaron Tobel as the Kenston Rotary Teacher of the Year, and Therese Petrick uh, was the runner-up, and so we extend our congratulations to both of them. And then we do look forward to continuing our hosting of the uh, Kenston Conversations, and our final Kenston Conversation um, for this year will be tomorrow night from 5 to 6 at Cerna's. And this is an opportunity for Kenston residents to meet members of the administration and to share a cup of coffee and talk about what's happening at Kenston schools. So we look forward to that opportunity and appreciate uh, the sponsorship of our community um, vendors who uh, supported us in that. So, um, and Mr. Gabram, we are looking forward to commencement and appreciate uh, the work of the administration in, in preparing for that. Uh, not quite ready yet with my uh, commencement words, but we will certainly get there. And we know that after the meeting tonight, uh, you will be staying to work with our Board of Education and finalize the plans for that commencement ceremony. So thank you for your help on that. Thank you, Mrs. Santilli. At this time, I will entertain a motion for an adjournment and for board members to stay around because Mr. Gabriel will guide us through our commencement practice. So I'll move. Motion. I move. Jen, is there a second? Second. Beth? All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye